Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show with Ken Lane. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I've had quite a few customers come in this week uh, complaining about deer, javelina, rabbits, pack rats. Oh my gosh, the animal pressure is is on right now. So uh, I thought I'd give you a list or some of the top plants that the animals kind of kind of guaranteed they're going to leave alone. You'll just see these this list growing in your neighborhood, so you know they're not going to bother. You know, if they don't bother in your neighbor's yard, they're not going to bother in yours. And and so I give you a quick lesson. A lot of the autumn colors, a lot of the the autumn, the things you're planting now are not bothered by the animals. So now, obviously, there's um, vegetables. They're going to like all of those. I mean, if it's a vegetable, they're going to eat it. If you like it, so are they. So the fruit trees, they're going to like it. So you got to watch that one. But for landscape plants. Uh, it's a little bit easier. So that front yard area, uh, there, there's ways, there's plants you can put out there. They don't bother. If you've got plants that you want to have where they, they're, they're going to go after them, like tomatoes and broccoli and cauliflower and lettuce and spinach, and they're going to like all those. You'll have to protect them. You fence them out or keep them out of that area or have a space or up on a deck, some way to keep the vermin out of them. But if it's a landscape plant, trees, I mean, sycamores, Plants, animals don't eat those. Uh, maples, especially the blaze maples. There's this beautiful red maple. They don't bother that. I don't know why. They look delicious, but they just seem to leave them alone. All of your evergreens, the conifers. All, do I mean all? Yeah, all. All the conifers, they'll leave alone. So that's uh, from Arizona cypress to Colorado spruce to uh, Austrian pines junipers, cypress, cedars, they're, they're going to, they don't bother any of those. I, I, juniper's a little bit that tender new growth sometimes, but generally you, you can put them out there. They're not going to bother them. If there's anything else, anything in the yard for them to eat, they would rather eat that than they would a conifer, a needled type of evergreen tree. So you're probably good to go. Uh, the, the latest color you're seeing out, um, the newest one, uh, you saw sumacs starting to go into color this week. So sumacs, they're just, uh, there's something about them. They're growing out there in the wild. They know don't eat sumac or I'll get sick to my stomach. So they leave those alone. There's quite a few different uh, tiger eye sumacs, uh, staghorn sumacs, trilobata sumac. These are all, they're all the same family. They're all cousins. They're not going to eat any of them. So they're all used to the animals. Just no, don't bother those. Most of the grasses, so pampas grass, that real big, beautiful, glorious pampas grass, uh, they don't bother that. Now you think they would eat a grass, but they don't. And it goes all the way down to deer grass, misacanthus. All of these, these are nativey kind of grasses. They don't bother bear grass. So the bear grass that grows wild out in the valley areas, uh, Chino Valley, Paulden, Prescott Valley, of course, Dewey. That is a, that wild grass. They don't bother whether it's an antelope, a deer, a javelina. They're not going to go eat that particular plant. So you can plant that with confidence and not worry about that herd of 15 javelina coming and clearing out everything. Now, they might come and dig things up. They like have nice, loose soil. So they're interested in that plant when you put it out there. Now, this is their living room. I mean, they, they notice any difference. So you're going to go, oh, let's go. Hey, buddy. Hey, Dave, let's go over there and check this thing out. Let's see what's going on over there. And so they'll, they'll kind of root around and go, oh, no, that's, I don't like, I don't like sumacs. Do you? No, no. Let's keep going. Let's go down the, let's go down the neighbor's yard and see if we can eat their pumpkins. So they're doing that. So they'll check it out though, to, to see if they don't like it. Some of your flowers are the same way. So a lot of flowers are mums. Animals don't bother mums. Sometimes they'll eat the flowers off. But generally, like I've got uh, javelina in front of my office here at the garden center. Um, it's glorious right now. Javelina and deer just roam up and down the street. In fact, this uh, fence around the garden center is to keep people out and mainly animals out. And so that if you do, if we leave a gate open, there will be javelina in the nursery, knocking everything over, eating, trying, tasting everything. And so it's to keep them out. So I've got moms right here where they they I know I can see the, the 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 footprints, and they're not eating my moms. 
And so for you, that's probably the same way. Same with euphorbia. There's a, a couple different colors, euphorbia, or uh, there's a couple, the three different varieties, I think, at the garden center currently. Go for plant. Um, um, what is that? Rainbow ascot euphorbia. And there's a new uh, kind of burgundy colored euphorbia. These are nice evergreen perennials. They grow about knee high. All, not all of them. About just knee high or a little bit below. They've got different colored foliage. Got a, typically a yellow kind of flowery kind of thing. But there's a sap in euphorbia that it just makes your mouth go numb. And so they start nibbling on it and then they go, oh, I can't, I can't through my mouth. What's going on here? And so they quickly stop eating it and they just learn, don't taste that one. It's nasty. You're going to need to find some water after this to rinse your mouth out. And so they just know that that plant has, has created over many lifetimes a way to defend itself through the sap. And it's, if you break off a branch of this, much like a poinsettia has that white milky sap to it, that's an indication that that plant is defending itself through its sap, you know, nasty tasting sap. Uh, lots of beautiful echinacea right now. Echinacea is this bright, it's, it's kind of like a sunflower, but you have a lot more choice of colors. Again, it gets about knee high, maybe a little bit shorter, 18, 24 inches. I have these big sunflowery kind of, but it comes in, in orange and green and yellow and purple, and lots of colors. But you'll notice with that particular flower, it's got a texture to the bottom of the leaf and it's got a texture spine up and down the, the stem of that flower. There, it's not using its, its sap, it's using its texture of its foliage. So when you eat that, you kind of, those hairs get stuck in your throat and they kind of go, oh man, I can't eat any more of this. Oh, it's terrible. And so it's a good wild flower that you can put out there that the animals are going to leave alone. So you can put a you can put a mixture, you can put a nice garden out there. It's probably not going to be a cottage garden. You might have 10 varieties of flowers to make a beautiful flower bed, but you'll commit to more of more units of the things you can grow that the animals aren't going to eat. So there's a strategy to it. That's where we can really help you out. Break, take a picture of your garden, get a quick measurement. We can we can walk you through and go. 99% chance, or at least 90% chance, animals are going to leave th this palette mix alone. Um, I can tell you they do like pansies. They love kale. So this, or these real pretty autumn flowers you can plant now. You plant them and they bloom like crazy right through winter. The negative, the flowers are edible. So you can harvest pansies and, and violas, put them on salads, impress your friends. Uh, they're colorful, they're they're pretty, but animals like them too. So you want to go to more of the euphorbias, the asters, the phlox, uh, the, the uh, echinaceas. They don't eat those. So there is a mixture of plants. Uh, the uh, shrubs, you're into pampas grass. Uh, anything that has cotoneaster, there's probably six different types of cotoneaster. Uh, some, are, some are native, some are think they're native, but all of them grow here and the animals don't bother them. And so you're good to go with those. Junipers, generally they leave those alone. They'd rather eat anything besides that. Uh, not all grasses, but a lot of grasses. I'd say th five or six. So deer grass, misacanthus, switchgrass, pampas grass, they're not going to bother those. And then sumacs, M many of your natives, uh, I would say uh, yuccas, agaves, uh, there's several over there that are that are just beautiful. Some in bloom. We got a new beautiful yellow yucca that's just really striking. Very unusual. And the hummingbirds love those. But the animals seem to leave them alone. They, they, they don't nibble on them. So there's a list of things that you can have um, at plant. And if you're worried about animals take, taking over and eating, if your neighbors are feeding the deer, you're going to have deer walking in front of your house. You need plants that they aren't going to nibble on as they walk through. That's the list you're going with, with. Most of your evergreens, so pine, spruce, cypress, cedar, firs, they don't eat. So you can put those with confidence. They're not going to not going to bother nibbling on those for you. I should go maybe at the maybe next segment. I can explain the differences between all the evergreens and why some are better than others. But right now. We are out of time. I could keep going with this. This is one, to, if, you, if you need help, come talk with us. We'll show you 
which ones to focus on and which ones kind of shy away from because they'll probably eat that arborvita, but they won't the juniper. Be right back after this. Prescott Blaze Maple is the fastest local tree with brilliant red foliage. Prescott Blaze Maples grow three feet each year. That's fast. Prescott Blaze Maples are perfect for patios or any place a shade tree is needed. We have a limited number of huge, instant Prescott Blaze Maples, but the $249 size is exceptionally nice. The maples are brighter in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Or shop online at top10trees.com. You're listening to garden expert, Ken Lane. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Thanks for tuning in to the Top 10 Garden Show. 